Here's a quick and easy guide to installing Ship of Harkinian, aka the coolest Ocarina of Time port you have ever seen. First, open up your file explorer and make a folder, name it whatever you want. This is going to be your folder where you're going to play the game from. Next, you need to legally acquire a Ocarina of Time debug ROM. That could be the original N64 ROM, that could be the GameCube ROM, but it must be a debug ROM and not the Master Quest version. For legal purposes, I can't give you the exact link as to where you're going to find it, but trust me, it's out there. It's fairly easy to find. Once you've acquired your ROM, you're going to click and drag it into that new folder you made. Next, we need to download the program we're going to use to actually play the Zelda port, and it's called Ship of Harkinian. Easiest way to find this download is to access the Ship of Harkinian Discord, aka Harbor Masters 64. You can Google it, you will find it. Once you've joined the Discord, underneath the Information tab, you're going to find Downloads. From there, you're looking for the latest version of Ship of Harkinian, should be right at the bottom here. So let's download it. Pick the right one for whatever platform you're using. Now that you have your Ship of Harkinian download, you're going to extract the zip file. Now that the zip file is extracted, you can actually delete the initial file just so you don't have doubles. Next, you're going to take the ROM and drag it into the Ship of Harkinian folder. And let's start up the program. It's going to say no OTR files found, generate one now, yes. It's going to say ROM detected, it appears to be the PAL ROM, the debug ROM, exactly what we're looking for, and it's going to say use this ROM, we say yes, and just let it do its thing. It's going to ask ROM extracted, extract another, nope, we are good. And just like that, we're up and running. And of course, it's working smoothly, but I know that's not why you came here. You came here for more, so I'm going to show you some of the typical enhancements you can add to the game uh, to make an even more enjoyable experience out of one of the coolest games of all time. If you press F1, that's going to pull up all your customizable settings. First thing you'll want to do is configure your controller settings. Um, you can play this game with a variety of controllers. You want to do keyboard, be my guest. But through settings and then controller, uh, you're going to press controller mapping. Um, and then you can just set up however you want. Some people want to have the right stick be used as the camera. That's a really nifty feature here in this port. Other people want it to be like the C button. So you can do it however you want, but that's how you get that set up. Uh, obviously to pick whatever controller you're using, make sure you get the right one and that it's working. Uh, you can even see if it's working right now just based on the stick right there. And while we're on the note of controllers, I also want to point you towards additional controller options. And there's a whole bunch of these, but the big one that I want to point out is D-pad controls and D-pad as equipped items. Meaning not only do you get the three C buttons to equipped items, but you can also uh, assign items to all your D-pad buttons as well. I'll show you what the camera controls look like later on. Once we figured out our controls, let's go into graphics and MSAA. Yeah, let's set it to like two. Uh, basically it's gonna help smooth out those polygons, but not make it too smooth so it still feels true to the original. Now this is like my favorite part. We can adjust the FPS. What you want to do is adjust the FPS to whatever your refresh rate on your monitor is. Uh, you can go into your own monitor settings to, to see what that can be. But for mine it's going to be 144. And just watch this load. You can already just tell how buttery smooth it flows. Oh my god. It's so cool, right? Um, jitter fix, you can also set it to the same FPS. Next, let's go into enhancements, gameplay, and there are a plethora of things for you to look through, but just a few to highlight under time savers. You know, let everybody remember the King Zora. Let, let's crank that up a little bit, okay? 
Um, maybe let's uh, climb a little bit faster. Sure, let's push some blocks a little bit faster. How about that? Next, I want to highlight Visual Stone of Agony. So um, if you are using a controller that does not have rumble, you can actually have a icon of the Stone of Agony on your screen and it will flash or light up uh, when there's something nearby versus rumbling. Also, assignable tunics and boots. That's going to make the Water Temple a whole lot nicer. Then let's go to graphics. Um, we're going to disable LOD. So um, when there's objects that are further away, it's just going to fully render them so they look good all the time. Now that we're playing on a more powerful piece of hardware, we can also disable the draw distance so that objects are just visible right from the get-go. But if you want to stay true to Zelda lore, we can keep this Kokiri draw distance checked off. Another interesting one is enable 3D dropped items and projectiles. So you know how when you would find a rupee, it'd just be like kind of the little PNG type thing sitting there versus if you enable this, you'll get like a fully fledged rupee like it would look like out of the treasure chest. I think disabling the black bar letterboxes goes against like everything they were trying to do with the Z target system, but man, it really changes the feel of the game and it almost just makes it feel more modern. Does that make sense? You, you just gotta try it. So basically what that means is, is when you're Z targeting, it doesn't go into that kind of widescreen looking thing. It's still just full screen. I think dynamic wallet icon is pretty cool too. Every time you upgrade the wallet, you get a different picture. I like it. While you're playing this, if you encounter any bugs, uh, here's a bunch of potential fixes. Um, this is pertinent just to the port. So uh, these aren't like known glitches within the actual game. This is just like uh, impact of having it on the computer and it glitches out. For restoration, we're gonna have red Ganon blood. Um, if you didn't know, in the original version of the game, Ganon had red blood, and then the versions after that, they changed it to green. There's a whole bunch of extras, um, but one that I am excited to try out for my next playthrough is randomized enemy sizes. I just want to see what that's going to look like. There's also a cosmetics editor where, as you can see here, you can change your tunic color, your menu color to literally anything you want. Lastly, there's a bunch of various cheats you can put in. You want to have infinite money, health, ammo, magic, Nehru's love, Epona carrots, yeah, no clip. You want to walk through walls. You want to climb everything like it's Breath of the Wild, hookshot everything. Sky's the limit. Before I forget, you may also want to turn on autosave as well. Like I was saying about the camera, super cool that if you have a controller with the right stick, you map it out to use the right stick, and then you enable the third person free camera, you can control the camera with the third stick, which really, to me, just makes, uh, makes it feel a lot more modern. Like all the other third person adventure games that we're familiar with nowadays. Anyway, that's all I got for now. My name is Ethan, aka Swan Dizzle, aka Ethan. Hope you enjoyed this. If you found it was helpful, consider a like, maybe a subscribe, and stay tuned. I will be streaming a Zelda randomizer on my channel, so lots more fun to come. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.